Airlines. Qantas chairman-elect John Mullen has fast-tracked his start date onto the airline's board, bringing it forward by months to Monday next week. Joining me now is business reporter Edward Boyd. Hi there, happy Friday, Ed. Bit of a down day for the Aussie markets. This move brings forward the uh, resignation of the current chairman at Qantas, Richard Goida, does it not? It sure does. Good, good morning, Cheng Li. And yes, tough start to the local market today, down about 1% in early trade. Uh, but this is quite a significant announcement here coming out from Qantas on the ASX this morning. Remember, late last year, um, the, the head of Qantas, Alan Joyce at the time, announced his early resignation from the airline. And then there was a lot of investors calling for the resignation of the chairman at that point, Richard Goida as well. And he announced he would be retiring from the board at the AGM last year is when he made that announcement. And he said it would happen before the AGM this year. And the AGM this year is not until November, so quite a long way off. Uh, but today, there's been a little release on the ASX saying John Mullen, who was appointed as the chairman-elect, here he is on the screen now, he was the former chairman of Telstra for, for a long period of time, he's going to take over as chairman-elect and non-executive director on the board of Qantas as of Monday. And now Richard Goida, what that leaves for him is he is going to slowly finish up about two months ahead of schedule as the chairman at Qantas. But he's still got a challenge on his hands because this announcement comes uh, about a week ahead of Woodside's annual general meeting. That's being held on the 24th of April, so just in the next few days. And he is also the chairman of Woodside. And there's been quite a few investors that have been questioning his tenure, Richard Goida's tenure, as the chair of Woodside as well. So perhaps these two announcements could be somewhat connected. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens at the AGM for Woodside next week. But Richard Goida now is the chair at Woodside, and he's obviously stepping down on Monday as the head of Qantas, Cheng Lee. Interesting to see what that does to the stock. Right, uh, turning to entertainment, Netflix has just posted its best start to the year since 2020, and that's thanks to its crackdown on password sharing. Yes, yeah, so they've, they announced the crackdown on password sharing about a year ago, and it's been a massive success for the company. At the same time, they've also introduced advertising as well on the basic standard Netflix plan. So they've got ads now, and they've also got a, a crackdown on password sharing. So basically, you can't share your account around with all your friends like you could in the past. And what's that's done is it's really increased the number of subscribers that Netflix have been gaining. So in the most recent quarter, the March quarter, they signed up about 9.33 million subscribers. They were, the market was expecting roughly 5 million subscribers, so it was more than double the expectations. So revenue was higher than anticipated, uh, but the forward guidance given by Netflix showed revenue was going to increase in this current quarter, quarter two, but it's a little bit lower than what the analysts were expecting. So if surprisingly, Netflix shares in after hours trading are down about 5%. So overall, it was a solid result for Netflix and their best start to the year since 2020, uh, but the market didn't like it and they're down. And as we said at the start, Ching Lee, the Aussie stock market is down pretty sharply this morning, down about 1%. It's still pretty close to its record highs, though. It's only a few percentage points off uh, its record high, which it set just about three weeks ago. And is it because of the negative close on Wall Street overnight, Ed? Well, we've had a few things. We've got the negative close on Wall Street overnight. We actually had stronger than expected unemployment numbers uh, out of the US, which basically is reinforcing the views from the US Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell that we heard from earlier this week, where he's basically told the market, unfortunately, we're going to need to keep interest rates higher than, than long, for, for higher for longer in America. There were a lot of people with hopes that rates in the US would be cut around June. Now it's looking like it could be July or even later this year because the problem not only facing the US Federal Reserve, but it's the Reserve Bank of Australia here, it's the Reserve Bank in New Zealand as well. Inflation is falling like a feather rather than a stone. That's what I heard an economist tell me just yesterday. Um, inflation is coming down, but it's coming down very softly. Lots of bankers would love to see it fall a lot quicker. The expectation was inflation was going to fall really fast, but it hasn't. It's actually coming down a lot softer than expected, and that's causing interest rates here in Australia and in America and all, all around the world to remain higher for longer and elevated. So it's putting pressure on households every month with their mortgage repayments and businesses with their loans Hopefully, by the end of this year, we'll start to see rates come down both here and in other jurisdictions around the world. For sure. It's a pretty painful feather. Thanks so much for your Absolutely. reporting.